Good evening. I had so much fun earlier. I figured we'd do it one more time. Uh, at, whenever I got done earlier, and God just kind of laid a, a parable on me that I figured I'd share with y'all. And uh, I read it over a little bit earlier, but I uh, hadn't really got into it too much. But I know that it's it's a parable that we've heard time and time again. If you've if you've been to church, you've heard this one. So. Uh, I wanted to read from Luke chapter 15 and we'll start verse 11. Let's go. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we come to you tonight in the name of your son, Jesus, and we ask you to forgive us of our sins where we've fallen short today, Lord, and Lord, we ask that you would help us tonight, Lord, and feed us with your word, and Lord, that you would move within us and move within our within the, these pages, Lord, that you would write these words on our heart, that we may live by them, that we, we may learn from them, that we may hear your voice in them. We thank you for all that you've done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I wanted to read from Luke 15, and we'll start in verse 11. And this is the prodigal son, uh, is the parable that I'm reading. So it's a very, very popular parable. It makes for really good preaching, uh, usually. So we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Luke chapter 15 verse 11. And he said, A certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with raucous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed the swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husks that the swine did eat. And no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough to, and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants." And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe, and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet, and bring hither the fatted calf, and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to be merry. Now his elder son was in the field, and as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fatted, cat, fatted, fatted calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. And he was angry, and would not go in. Therefore came his father out, and entreated him. And he answered and saying, said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgressed at I at any time, thy commandment, and yet thou never gavest me a kid, that I might make merry with my friends. 
But as soon as this thy son was come, which hath devoured thy living, but as soon as this thy son was come, which hath devoured thy living with harlots, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was meet that we should make merry, and be glad, for this thy brother was dead, and is alive again, and was lost, and is found. I want to walk back through this, and you know the prodigal son is probably one of the most popular parables that we we've, we've heard uh, growing up, and uh, it's a very important parable. It's you know whenever we're reading this, we we understand that um, this is not a story of salvation. It's not a story. Um, this is this is a man that was secure. He was secure at his father's house. This is a son. Two sons, uh, both at his father's house, had the security of his father and had an inheritance that was going to fall to them. So if we're talking about this, if we're wanting to compare what we're reading to what we may see or what we may go through, um, you know, we can, we can be a believer. We can be... Uh, whatever you want to call it, saved, we can be um, in Christ, we can be following Christ, um, we can have submitted our lives to Christ. And somewhere along the line, somewhere along the way, fall out of what we had committed. It doesn't mean that we lose any salvation, it doesn't mean that we're no longer in Christ, but we have strayed, we have left our comfort we have left what we knew to be um, our protection and we see that all the time I think we've all done it we've probably all done it for most of our lives so as we read through we'll kind of take this example and see if we can't apply it to what we're going through or what we could go through or maybe what we've been through um, in our lives the younger of them said, this verse 12, to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. I look at that and I say, you know, here's a man that he's, he's at the age now. He knows what his father has. He knows what his father possesses and what will be his one day. And he is secure. He is in his father's home. And he is enjoying all the fruits of his father's labor. He is enjoying everything that his father provides. He is enjoying the protection of his father and the security of his uh, material suppliers, his goods. And, but it's not enough. At some point, he got uh, complacent and it was just, you know, yeah, he provides. But if I had it now... I could do more with it. And we see that so many times. You can also draw this to, we ask God for so many things. Oh, Father, if we could just have this, if, we, if you could just give me this, if you would just give me the goods that falleth to me, you know, I will make my own way. We don't ever tell God that whenever we're asking for it. But whenever we get it, whether, whatever it may be, we may need a job, we may need whatever, but you get the job, you get the raise, you get the money, what do you do with it? We usually do exactly what this guy does. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance. So whenever he asked his father, hey father, can I have this? The father gave it to him graciously. He did not have to. The father did not owe him this. The father gave graciously and gave him his portion at the time he requested. And as soon as he had the blessing from his father, okay? So he took in the blessing and same thing that we do, extra money, 
maybe some extra time on your hands, uh, whatever it may be. It's just sitting there. It sure should do something with that. And that's what he did. So he, he took that money and we can also draw it to our comfort level. The more comfortable we are in life, the more likely we are to take everything that has made us comfortable, uh, the gifts from God, and run with them. Say, hey, I can do this. Look, I'm gonna look, look where I'm at. Look, I've made it already. So I'm just gonna, now that I've got my lump sum, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna increase it or I'm gonna live it up with it or whatever it may be. But the son didn't realize that the father has been working hard for what he gave him, that it wasn't something that's that's that was easy for him to acquire. It was something that he paid his whole life for. And he gave it to the son, and the son took for granted that the father, that was his inheritance, that was everything the father had and his son's portion, and he left with it. And he wasted it. Just like what I was talking about with whatever we're asking God for, or whatever we have asked God for. Maybe we asked him for uh, that job or, or a raise or whatever the that um, that companion or that whatever it may be, and he gave it to us. And after we had it, what'd we do? We wasted it. We threw it away. We had fun with it for a moment. We lived it up. And we do that, I've done that quite a bit. Um, that's what we do. Whenever we ask God for these blessings or we ask him for something, and we're honest, we, we really want it. It's really going to improve our lives. It's really going to improve my kids' lives. It's really going to improve my family's life. But I got this extra money now, and I really ain't got to do with it. Can that turn into something really bad really fast? Absolutely, and it normally does. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. You know, it's funny how whenever we're in the Father's house, whenever we're in communion with God, whenever we're walking with God, whenever we're doing what we're supposed to be doing, we have a level of comfort and we have a level of protection. And then we get, our mind gets to wondering and we start to do things on our own. And when all the money was spent up, so not only is the comfort gone, not only is the protection gone, the, the security of having funds for later on, that's gone. Now guess what happens? A pandemic and a hurricane. Right? So all this stuff I did have, if I could have hung on to it, I didn't know there was going to be a famine. I didn't know there was going to be a pandemic. I didn't know there was going to be a hurricane. If I just had what I squandered, what I wasted, man, this would be a lot easier. But we spent it. We spent all of it. There rose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And that's whenever, man, that's whenever it hurts. It hurts bad. Whenever you're in want. Whenever you know you had it, you know you were there. And you know you had everything going your way. And then situations, along with bad decisions... And you're in want. So you go from the top to the bottom. Happens every day. And when he, <clears throat> and he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. And he sent him into his fields to feed swine. Alright, so whenever we're looking at this, that's exactly what we do. So we ask the Father for something. He graciously gives it to us. Instead of using what the Father gives us to increase, increase what He gives us and help others begin to have an inheritance also. Because that's our job. Our job is to take what God gives us. 
share it with others to glorify God in order for them to also get the inheritance that we have so that they may share with others to glorify God. That's the order. That's the order. That's what we see in the New Testament over and over and over again is you're giving certain things. And usually those things are not seen. They are spiritual. And you're commanded to share them. You share them with others. You don't keep them to yourself. You share all of those gifts, all of those blessings that God gives you with others, but not for yourself. I want to also call attention to the fact that he didn't spend all that money alone. He had a good time with it. There was people there, without a doubt, having good, a good time with him and his money. But whenever the famine came, it doesn't say he had a group following him to this, uh, this other country. It says that he had to join himself to a citizen of the country he was in. And he sent him into the fields to feed the swine. So he bargained, he got a job uh, feeding the swine in the fields. And it's a far, far fall from where he was. It's a far fall from where he chose to leave. And that's the biggest thing. Nowhere in this story did anybody force anyone to leave. Nowhere in this story did anybody ask him to leave. You see, he got his inheritance, but that didn't mean he had to go anywhere. He could have very well, like we said, stayed in his father's home, worked for his father, and spread what his father gave him increased it but he didn't so he is in the fields now and he's feeding the swine this is a jew and they're not big fans uh, they don't eat pork they don't mess with the animals but you see where this guy ended up let me make let me draw this, this line here because it's easy to draw. When we are out of the will of God, we end up in places we do not ever want to be. Not because of any other reason than we left God. And God didn't leave us. We took the blessings and ran. And where we had all these morals, we had all these, these uh, we were doing certain things. Were we doing it for God? Or were we doing it for the blessings? Or what was it? Because we got our, we got our, our nugget and we ran with it. And now we are in a pretty rough situation as we're feeding the swine in the fields. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat. This man was hungry. He was starving. He would fain to fill his belly with the husk that the swine would eat. A Jew that does not touch and eat or anything with pork or with swine is now considering eating the pig's food. And we read that and we say, there's no way, right? No way. Who does that? We do. Every day. We do. We have something. We have blessings we have whatever it may be and we begin to stray with it and there's a point in there where we could turn back and go back to our father's house or we can join with the citizen and begin to feed the 
the swine in the field. If you're in that middle area, understand that either way, you got to make a decision. Why wouldn't you go back to the Father? Why would you insist on feeding the swine? Well, because we think that we can get ourselves out of situations that we got ourselves into. And that's the hardest part for us to, to really grab a hold to is we begin to stray and we see life begin to unravel. But just like a rope, there's many, many strands there after we watch a few of them break away, go back. Go back to the Father. Don't just stand there, or don't start unwinding it faster, which is usually what I do. Go back to the one that made it in the beginning. Go back to the one who provided in the beginning. Don't go further away. Don't try to make your own provision. You know, because the mind will tell you, well, what I can do is I'll go feed these swine for a little while, make a little money, and then I'll do this and I'll do that and I'll do this. When in reality, if you were going to do that, wouldn't you have done it with the father's inheritance, with the big sum? So more than likely, everything that he's getting, he's still trying to be this person that he never was. He was thinking about eating the pig's food. You know, sin and disobedience and straying from God, they begin to snowball. And what happens, it separates. It begins to separate us. And we begin to separate ourselves from God because of sin, shame, guilt, uh, God gave us all this stuff. We didn't do anything with it. We may be separating ourselves just out of disobedience because we don't want what God's giving us. We want something else, and we know God's not going to give us what we want. So we're separating ourselves more and more. I want to ask you this because in the next verse, no man gave him no man gave unto him. Still couldn't find no help. Now verse 17, when he came to himself, he said, all right, so picture this guy, this guy that comes from a family who's got money, they've worked hard for it, and he got a good sum of money, enough to go act like, like this. And he... He went from the top all the way to the bottom, okay? Or, nah, close to the bottom. It says that he feigned to fill his belly with the, the pig food, but he didn't. He came to himself, so he, he, he woke up before he did. What would have happened had he ate the food? he would be eating pig food. He would continue because it would do the job. It would be, it would nourish, it would kill the hunger pains, it would satisfy his flesh enough to where he could continue to endure this pain, this suffering, everything that he had here, if he had made that decision to begin to eat the pig slop with them, he would not have stopped until he got to another level lower. Because that's what we do. Because whenever we have problems, whenever a pandemic and a hurricane hit and we've spent all of our inheritance that God graciously gave us or all of our blessings that he gave us and we, we didn't prepare in fact, we squandered everything, so we begin to provide for ourselves. We, 
we begin to grab pieces and try to move them and try to make everything work. And we're really just making a bigger mess. And we find ourselves in the pen with the pigs, hungry, thinking of their food because we have none. It's kind of like whenever you start to squander all these things and instead of just going back to the Father, going back to the source, going back to where your blessings came from in the beginning, instead of doing all these things, we go to a bottle, we go to a casino, we go to a website, we go to you name it, we go. We are eating the the food of the pigs. And we start and we can't stop. Life begins to really just tumble at that point. But this guy didn't. He, he knew who his father was. He knew the, the type of man he was. He knew the type of father he was. And he knew the resources he had. So he did not make that decision to begin eating the pig's food. And I, and I, would, I would say this to y'all is don't begin to eat with the pigs. Don't begin to destroy yourself because you've destroyed something else. It's what we do every day. It's a, a good reason why this story is here is we continue to pile on the sin or the just tools of the devil begin to add up to a point where you're unrecognizable to where you used to be dressed in the nicest clothes and now you're with the, the swine. You're in the pig pen. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare and I perish with hunger? So now the man, the Christian, this man here is realizing what he's done. And I want to tell you, if you were secure in the Father's house, if you were um, saved by the grace of God out of the destruction that we're all putting ourselves through, if, if you've been saved, if, if God has lifted you up out of that, and if you're born again, walking with Christ and you strayed keep this in mind that you know that God's supplies never ran out that everything that he has given you everything that he's done for you all the promises all the, the unseen things that you feel in here there's still plenty of that with your father we may not feel them no more we may have lost contact with them we may be in the worst place of our lives but we know where we got them from the first time but will the will his father receive him and that's what we worry about if i have to go back he will know that i spent all the money that i've been in some horrible places he will know that I failed. But he's, par he's dying with hunger, so he's got to make a decision here. He's either got to go back and eat that pig food or go talk to his father. And if you're in a place right now where you have one really, really, really hard decision to make, really bad decision to make, or you need to go to the Father. That should be a no-brainer, but it never is. Because the further you wait, the further away from the Father you are, the harder, the more de the devil will give you, the more reasons, everything, not to call on him, to continue with the slop, continue with the pigs. But he was dying with hunger. I will arise and go to my father's house, and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. 
this is his plan and it's a good plan this should be your plan if you're if you're not you may not be in the pig pen but you may be about to join yourself to a citizen to feed his swine you may not be in the pig pen but you may have just got your portion and you're thinking about going and having a a fun time living it up before you get to that pig pen know that you can turn back to the father now it's a lot easier the further you get away from him the more that the devil's going to just tell you no 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 he won't accept you he won't accept you 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 mess this up you did this you did this just continue things are going to get better if you just continue and that's a lie we hear a lot. You just keep doing what you're doing. I always see that. And people be like, oh, life's just terrible. And people, and they'll put it in a post. And then somebody else say, you just keep pushing forward. Well, I mean, maybe not. Maybe you're pushing forward is what's putting you in this position. Maybe you need to just stop and talk to God a little bit and, and go back to the Father. Because push, just push, push forward and keep going. Sounds good. But not if you're in a pig pen. I mean, in that case, they're saying eat more slop. It's okay. Just eat it. Well, no. Get away from it, man. Go back to the father. So, <clears throat> he went to his father. And he told him, Father, I have sinned against heaven. He repented. Father, I've sinned against heaven and you. He did what every Christian needs to do whenever they're in that situation. No, you can always go to the Father. No, you can always give those sins to God and say, I've sinned against you. I've sinned against everyone that depended on me. I've sinned against myself. I have sinned. And he arose and he came to his Father and this is what the Father did. Because whenever we're going back, whenever we're going back to the Father, we, we're timid, we're scared, we, we know we've messed up. And that's anybody in life, whether it's your earthly father or your heavenly father. These circumstances, these sins, these, this disobedience causes something to happen inside our bodies. It, it happened with Adam. Adam, where art thou? He was hiding from God, his creator, the one that he's been walking in the garden with since he breathed life into him. But now he's hiding from God. He knows he's hiding in vain. He knows God knows where he is. But a little fruit, and all of a sudden, he's got fig leaves hanging from him, and he's hiding behind trees, and he just looks like an idiot. That is what sin does. That is what disobedience does. It grows and grows and grows until we don't recognize ourselves, and no one else can recognize us either. But the father, because he had just, I've sinned against heaven and before thee because he repented and he went back to his father the father didn't make him wait. He didn't punish him. He didn't, he didn't do any of those things. I guarantee you the sin punished him enough. The disobedience punished him enough. When it's time to go back to God and you finally soften that heart and say, I'm, so, I'm sorry, God, I've sinned. I've done these things. I didn't mean to. Wasn't my plan, but I'm here. forgive me he does and he don't make he's not going to make you do a whole bunch of stuff forgiveness is forgiveness he forgived him from afar off and he he when he was yet a great way off his father saw him and he had compassion i thank god that we serve a god that has compassion that has mercy that gives grace. Without that, we would all be burning in 
hell or on our way fast tracking but when we call on God he there's never one place in this Bible you're going to find a true repentant sinner say Christian whatever there's never one place where you're going to find them calling on God and him or Jesus and him standing there with his arms crossed saying no suffer 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 no and whenever they call him when Peter was started to go down he snatched him up when the disciple went to the bottom of the boat said we're dying we're dying he immediately told the wind and the waves to be still here this father he had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Now, I don't think, because of this man's situation, I don't think he had time to take a bath. I don't think he had resources to take a bath. I don't think he had time to put on new clothes. I don't think he had new clothes. I think that the father seen him from afar off, and he said, is that my son? Oh, I, can't, I can't even recognize him. And he looked, and whenever he started to make him out, he took off. He knew it was him. Behind all the slop, all the sweat, probably scars, he probably lost a lot of weight. But the Father knows. And once you're His, you're His. You can stray, but He wants you back. He's going to get you back one way or another. He'll get you back here, or He'll take you home. If you're a believer follower of Christ you have a job to do here on earth if we begin to squander what God has blessed us with we destroy ourselves if we do not hear that call if we do not come back to him he will take us home but if we have the boldness the strength and just the if we just call on him he'll meet us he's not going to let us he's not going to let us flap in the wind he will run to us with compassion and he fell on his neck and he kissed him and the son said unto him father i've sinned against heaven and in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called thy son he was humbled by this experience the son was not a humble son he was not he wanted his money he could do it better he could have more fun he could do more things he could make life better than what what dad had if he just had his money he got his money and he got humbled that's all he got he got hungry and humbled and he came home and he was repentant he was not just saying it he was not just telling others or anything he was with the father and he was sorry he was sorry he could not believe he did that and he sinned against heaven and he sinned against his father and he just wanted another shot he didn't he knew he could not be his son no more he knew that was going but if i could just be a servant and anything's better than those fields but those pigs if i could just help you out around here i know i can't be your son no more the father said to his servants bring forth the best robe and put it on him put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet so the father just ignored him he said no he ignored the whole i can no longer be your son and he called his servants over and he said bring my son a robe put some rings on his fingers some shoes on his feet why would he do this why would he do this to somebody who who did this to him i mean the father should you know we look at it he should have he should have punished him a little he should have put him out in the field got some labor made some of his money back from him and then once he worked it all for you know however long then okay you can begin to sit at the table we'll work you in that's not how God works. Why? Because once you're 
a child of God, once you're a son of God, you only get that way by calling on God's sent son that died for us, Jesus Christ. And we're telling God that we're trusting in his son. And we are also sons because of it. And Jesus is the one that God is seeing when he looks at us. Because if he's seen us, we would die. Because of our sin. Because we are evil. Because of our flesh. We would die. But when God looks at us, he sees Jesus. If we have called on him, if we have repented, if we are in Christ, Christ in us, doing our, once we, once we make that commitment, once we just call on God, we're his, and he no longer sees us. He sees his son, Christ. He no longer sees our sin. He sees his son's blood that was shed to wash away those sins. The father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe, put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and the shoes on his feet. Bring hither the fatted calf, kill it, and let us eat and be merry. So why did the son leave? To have a good time, right? He left to, to kill the fatted calf. To eat, drink, and be merry, and to have a good time. You see what the Father had for him in store. The whole time, God, or the Father in this parable, already had what the Son desired, but he had it in a godly way, in the, in the wheel. It was in his house. It was in his order. This is how you eat drink and be merry in the kingdom of God or in the house of this father. This is how we do things so that we don't end up in the swine with the swine eating their food. But he left to get what he already had if he had stayed. It's what we do. It's what we do. For this my son was dead and he is alive again. He was lost, and now he is found. And they began to be merry. You know, whenever we're saved, whenever we, whenever we accept Christ, whenever we hear that call, and we begin to follow Christ, they said, we stray, we do. We slip, we backslide, whatever you want to call it, we stray. Get back. Get back to him. He didn't leave you, you left him. Get back to him. You're going to have to shed some of those things to get life back in order. You're going to have to get rid of some of that swine food. You're going to have to get rid of some of those things that got you in that condition. But before you start getting rid of anything... You need to call on God, and He will help you get rid of them. And see, too many times we try to get good before we go home. We try to clean up before we go home. We try to walk in the door with some dignity, and we know we have none. We know we left it all in that field, but we're still going to try to pick our head up and walk through like we know something. And God's saying, I don't care how dirty you are. I don't care how much you've messed up. I don't care what you've done. I just want you back home. I just want you back in my hand, in my protection, so that I can make sure that this life is lived right, that you can eat, drink, and be merry in the protection of God and not in the insanity of the world. Now the elder son, and this is just fitting because now the elder son was in the field. And as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. So here's old goody two He dad's boy right here. This is the one that did everything right. You know, so you have one son who got his money and ran. 
and you have one son who got he also got an inheritance and he stayed and he helped dad and i'm sure he had every penny that his dad gave him and he probably increased it okay um so you have not only do you have the 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 christian who has strayed and and got himself in some really bad situations but now you have the christian who has stayed home and has enjoyed the blessings of the father the protection of the father the entire time so you have two different you, know, you have two opposites here or two sides of the coin here to look at and there's good and bad to see from both of them because this elder son was in the field as he came and drew nigh to the house he heard music and dancing he called and one of the servants and asked him what does these things mean and he said unto him thy brother is come and thy father hath killed the fatted calf and i like to stop these because in my mind i'm thinking he goes to the servant and he asks him what are the here why is everybody happy and happy? and what did i miss this guy says your brother your older brother came home and immediately he's like so what did, did dad and they're celebrating that we don't have to worry about him no more. I mean, what? Because he's no good. Nobody, I mean, he took all the money and he ran. He didn't help. He didn't do nothing. He left us here, you know. So, I mean, I know they're not music and dancing for him, right? And he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf. So now that guy's like, no, it's just the opposite. We just killed a fatted calf. Uh... And your, your father's got the music going, and we're having a good time over there because he got home safe and sound. Oh, man, that's tough, huh? That's tough. When you're the good brother, mm, man, that's tough. And he was angry and would not go in. Therefore came his father out, and he entreated him. You know, look at this, because and sometimes we don't like when other people get something. Sometimes whenever somebody says that they're doing better or if we see them doing better, we may get angry and not go in. Well, why does he get that? I've been here the whole time. And he was angry and would not go in. And, you know, and God doesn't tell us to do that. The father here, he's, he goes out and he says, come, come in, your brother's home. Your brother's home. Let's go celebrate. And he answering, answered, said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgress at any time thy commandment, and yet thou ne never gavest me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. That is also what we do. This is a picture of a self-righteous man. You know, whenever we're, well, we do it, we do it, we do it. So we have two people that are doing it their own way. Who's right? Well, the father's right. It was the father's money. It was the father's provision. It was the father's protection. So who's right? Neither one of them. They're both depending on the father. One just ran afar off and came back. But this one here, he's been living off the father the whole time. He pulls his weight around, but at the same time, without the father, both these boys are nothing. But notice how we get that self-righteous, where we want everybody to feel better, but not too much better. Let's not get carried away. You can't get any better than me because I deserve more, because I've been here the whole time. One day you may not be there. One day you may be the son that's far off and when you come back you're going to want people to accept you and you're going to have some that get mad because they don't like that you're doing well don't be don't be that one that gets upset because someone else is enjoying what you should be enjoying if you have been a good steward of God's blessings and God's provision in your life, then don't just keep it and say how good I've been. You share it and you begin to help others with it. And when your brother comes back, 
wherever he may have been, you should have been there with your father, welcoming him. Come back. We need you. We've missed you. I'm so glad to see you. I'm glad you're safe. Let's clean you up. Come on. Don't meet them with anger. Have some compassion, like the Father. And you notice that out of all this, the Son that had been doing right by the Father the whole time was disobedient as soon as the other son came back. So the Father gets one son back, and now he's got one that's trying to stray. That's not how God has designed it. That's how we want it. That's how we do this. That's how the world does it. But the believer should be excited to bring others in to the kingdom of God, to help others, to shine that light on them, to help them see the way. I'm telling you, they're going to have to help me see the way later. I know it. It's just a matter of time. Don't take for granted how many blessings you have and start to judge other people by their faults. So many times we see all the good we do and we ignore the bad unless someone else is doing the bad. Then we can definitely point that out. As soon as this thy son was come, which hath devoured thy living with harlots, thou hast killed for him the fatted, fatted calf. And he said unto him, Son, Thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. Listen, don't start getting jealous or getting uh, envious or uh, coveting other people's things. Understand that if you've been with God, if you've lived a, a life that, that is in line with God, then you have enjoyed everything that God had to offer for your life this entire time. Your reward is the fact that you were, was not in the pig pen. It was the fact that God kept you because you were obedient, because you stayed, because you may have wanted to, but you didn't. Be thankful that all that God has is ours. Don't start to envy other people. Don't start to be ugly, angry, or mean because you don't think somebody deserves it. God gives and He takes. And that's His to give and take. It's not ours to get mad about. It was meet that we should make merry and be glad. For thy brother was dead and is alive again. He was lost and now he is found. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for your word. We thank you for such a clear story and such a, 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 a true story. Is the fact that we have everything in you, that we know where our protection is, that we know where our material supply comes from. Lord, that we know we are safe in your hand, but yet we stray. Lord, I want to lift up anyone out there tonight that's struggling, that is strayed, that has found themselves in a, in a situation or in a place that they never thought they would be. Lord, their heart, their mind, they don't know what to do. They're confused. Lord, we want to ask you to begin to call and open their ears to accept that call and come running back to you. Lord, we thank you for always having open arms and compassion, giving us grace and mercy when we deserve none. Lord, we just thank you for always providing, sheltering us, and keeping us. Lord, we just pray for those out there that don't know you, that have never been under your protection. Lord, that today would be the day that they would call on Jesus and they would begin to let Him work in their lives and begin to eliminate some of those things that have got them in the worst place they've ever been. Lord, that without Him, we can't. We can't continue to move forward. 
that without him we will only begin continue to tear ourselves down and our families down lord i pray that you will help each of us be thankful for what we have lord to give you the glory for giving it to us and lord that we would share it with each other and those who need it and we would share it willingly knowing that we got it from you it was never ours to begin with lord keep us away from the being self-righteous and thinking we're better and judging others and always thinking we're right everyone else is wrong lord let us just concentrate on your word let us speak to you as we are in prayer and lord we thank you for listening and we thank you for opening up your book to us and lord we just pray for the strength of everyone out there who's going through times that you would strengthen them and lift them and get them through that if they're still in your hand that you you let them know that they're safe they're okay that everything will be okay because you have them in your hand and again we ask for anyone that is wandering that is strayed out there lord help us to help them back into your arms and let us rejoice together and be merry that our brother he was dead but he's alive again in jesus name we pray amen now have a good night